Hello and welcome back to the Jew Rogaine Experience. Uh, joining me today is a very funny comedian, a fellow documentary filmmaker, kind of taken aback by how quickly I just started this podcast. Is this the fastest a podcast has ever begun that you like walked in on? Yeah, and not only that, I, the viewers can't see it. There's a beautiful uh, Fast and Furious tapestry behind oh, yeah. you. Yeah, um, it's been mentioned before on the show. Zach Stein uh, tried to pull a prank on me by calling my attention to it once it's, on it it's fucking gorgeous so this <laughs> this so people one thing is oh, by the way kyle anderson Hi is, guys. Is, the, hey is the name of my guest today <laughs> um one thing I, I should mention is that people often like when they watch the clips on youtube or on instagram and then the few the even fewer people that watch the show on youtube uh -huh. and the even fewer people that listen to it on <laughs> any streaming platform no um uh they always any any comic that comes is always surprised by how small the room is. It looks from the outside, it looks bigger than it is. It's really a storage closet. It's uh, it it it's nice in here. I like. I I was not taken aback by the room. I what honestly was so nice was I was like, oh my god, he doesn't do the show in his living room. Oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah. So no, many I, people have like this set up like next to their coffee maker. <laughs> totally, totally. No, this is this is exclusively my podcast studio. Formerly one of my roommate's bedrooms, but uh, at a certain point I started making <laughs> and I was very curious if you were going to use all three. Oh, I, was, I go all three creams, I, baby. I didn't know. I, there was a part of me that was like, am I getting him enough creams? But I was stealing them no, from the great. gas station next door. Oh, that's great. So I don't want to I don't want to oversteal because otherwise it's homemade coffee, homemade coffee, meaning from my Keurig. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a big coffee guy, but I do like it on occasion. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel I'm, like it gets me in the zone for podcast. Yeah, there's there's some people that are like big, big, like everyday coffee drinker. I'll do coffee on the road a lot. Actually, when I'm on the road, I oh, do coffee yeah. and I feel like I'm like a. Like a road dog. There know? was nothing better than the period in my life where I didn't drink coffee and I would have coffee every once in a while. Because that, I imagine, is like what the first time I do cocaine will be like. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm incredible. I wrote three screenplays this evening. Yeah, you're gonna on be, one cup of coffee you're now. Be chasing this caffeine dragon forever. Now, now I now I I drink coffee to give myself enough energy to get to my bed for a nap. Uh <laughs> the the best thing about your podcast name too was um, how many times YouTube was like, you mean Joe Rogan. Oh really? Did Clearly. you look did you look it up? Yeah, yeah. I tried on YouTube and, and to on find YouTube, it. YouTube, yeah. And I had to go in the podcast app because it kept being like, You mean <laughs> Joe Rogan. <laughs> Here I thought the Jew Rogan experience was gonna like draw people in on YouTube. I mean people you should do your your uh, your thumbnails just like his with the dumb green the, square. Here's the funny thing. I don't <laughs> really ever <laughs> listen like ever i used to occasionally like years and years and years and years, and years ago and then i'll watch clips every once in a while yeah i get and, clips come across me every um, once in a while but i've never I don't think I've ever sat down and watched like a four hour Joe Rogan. I'm not podcast. as anti Joe Rogan as a lot of people, but I'm also not pro. I've always said like, like uh, I have a joke about how I'm politically moderate and the best, w <laughs> the best way to describe myself politically is I don't like Joe Rogan, but I also don't like people that don't like Joe Rogan. That's sure. uh, that's, yeah. that's me. That's, that's, that's my politics. That's a really good barometer. <laughs> Well, because people that people that like or hate something too much can totally ruin that thing mm -hmm. permanently. Like people that likes that like uh, the fans of things can totally ruin things. Like, Absolutely. That is such a Absolutely. phenomenon in the world. And it's also a funny thing, like being a big fan of something that people don't know about. And like loving that thing. And then when people start to know about it, this conflict inside of me of like, well, I do want this thing to be successful and I want more people to know about it. Just not any of these people. <laughs> yeah, that, that's sort of the, the Rick and Morty conundrum, right? Where it's like, it's a great written comedy. I think it's very funny when I watch it. 
I don't ever want to talk to somebody who like who has any who has a Rick yeah. and Morty shirt. That's yeah. that's kind of I've always said like Bernie and Rick and Morty are the same for me. It's like <laughs> I love them, but I don't like anyone wearing one of their shirts. Yeah, the merch around <laughs> Bernie Sanders is like when I felt like when he when the Bernie fandom really jumped a shark for me was when he was just sitting in that chair. Yeah. And I'm like, the man is just sitting in a chair, and everybody's like, oh, my God, he's giving over it, sis. And I'm like, he's not. <laughs> he's cold. He's just cold in a chair. He's, he's a cold Jew. <laughs> Trust me. I've been a cold Jew in a yeah. chair. We've all been cold Jews in L- chairs. There's, there's nothing. That, the, the temperature not being the ideal for me is the number one thing that will get me to want to be somewhere else and express it with every fiber of my being. I know. Imagine you were uncomfortable once, and now it's T-shirts for hipsters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's 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 amazing. So um, so Kyle, I want for, I wanted to, I actually almost wanted to cut in on the pop, but there was oh, wow. too much good stuff here. I want to read this to you. Um, okay. So so you'll you'll get in a sense when I give you this. Pr- okay intro of what eyes. of what this is about to be like um so i had alice hamilton on oh, the podcast good, good. a long time ago and i ended up <laughs> i ended up not being able to release the episode perhaps a blessing in disguise because my every like all of my tech was fucked up. It was like towards the beginning of doing the show okay, okay. and the camera, I didn't focus beforehand. So sure. it was just no focus. And uh, one of the two <laughs> mic things I had on oh, the wrong man. channel and maybe a blessing in disguise that okay. that podcast could have been, could have been the enemy, but I, I opened the, but I, I haven't had a chance to reread this letter to someone who I thought would enjoy it okay. as much. Oh my God. As I'm you on else. the edge of my fucking seat. Okay. Buddy. So I want to, so here's my, here's my preview. You have no Gosh, idea. I don't even know what this you is. You have no idea. You have, so you, have, you have no idea what you're about to hear. So this, I'm going to do my best to like Let's not go. say the names in it. This is a letter, a Christmas letter. Okay. From my aunt. Okay. Uh, the first Christmas after the pan. I think it's 2021 okay. Christmas. So okay. This is my family Christmas letter from my wonderful liberal amazing aunt that i love who has two great kids that i love and i sweet get, i get along super yeah. well with okay. my uncle too okay 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 ready and she's your biological aunt right or is is or, or are you biological uncle which one is uh, it's actually compli- it's it's my grandfather's second wife's daughter who he adopted okay. like very young but it is but it is but through, like grew up my whole but, life but she's the one that's your actual family member yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, grew, cool, grew cool. up my whole whole gotcha. life yeah, with her yeah, she's me. she's wonderful we talk all cool. the time i i honestly hope she doesn't hear me read this on the sure, podcast yeah. which is a chance i'm a tagger um, <laughs> season's greeting from the blank family to yours edelman. it's been a crazy 20 plus month not edelman uh, <laughs> i'm like i'm like why would you? everybody knows that josh <laughs> no christmas card last year and no christmas party at the house for the first time in decades but we'll be resuming this year with a christmas day open house from 2 to 9 p.m all are welcome i don't live in the same state as them could not attend but would have loved to Since I last wrote one of these, blank turned 14 and 15, Mm -hmm. graduated from blank, and began high school at blank. Good for them. He's now a sophomore with a stellar record in wrestling and a steady interest in STEM. Here's a question, just real quick. I didn't know people did this. Did the Christmas letters? Did like a letter to let you know like, hey How everyone's doing? Here's how we're all doing. This is, I'm in such a bubble of like weird. Listen, this is the only one of these I may have ever received. (laughs) Okay. Because I'm like, I didn't, (laughs) this is amazing. I didn't know people gave like. But but I love this letter so much. This is like a Wikipedia entry on the family. I guess I, to say I love this letter so much is a little bit confusing. I have mixed emotions about the letter, but truly I love it. Um, all of his summer activities were canceled in 2020, but he was able to compete at se- a session at Second City in the summer of 2021. Okay. Good for you, taking up taking Good up job. the family Good business. Job. Blank turned 10 and 11 and is currently in sixth grade at Blank. His 2020 basketball season was cut short on the verge of winning multiple league championships with Blank starting at point guard. Uh, also taken after the family uh, basketball skills. It would be really funny. No genetic, it... no genetic uh, link <laughs> yeah, between yeah. us. If this, if this letter just became like, yeah, he was kicked off the team because they had a uh, 
a very talented Labrador that joined. <laughs> no, it's not that going Labrador there. Labrador took them right to state. <laughs> this year, his team picked up where they left off with an undefeated record so far. He's also the starting pitcher for the blank baseball champs in 2020 and started for two blank teams in 2021. Blank still helps coach all the boys' sports. With the rise of remote office work, he seamlessly switched from the blank district to the blank district without having to leave his loop office. He got a de facto life sentence vacated for two longtime clients who were convicted as young teens. He also got a new hearing for a longtime client who was serving a 50-year sentence at a 20-year-old case and played a part in Bill Cosby's successful appeal. <laughs> There's more to the letter, but that's the that's the stopping point right there. I just love like like I you know it's trying to like figure out how to take this because like because like definitely what an accomplishment like what an accomplishment like you don't fuck with me my uncle got fucking Cosby out you want to fuck with me you want to fuck with the Cos family attorney. <laughs> It's it's an interesting highlight to have to include because if you didn't include it, then your spouse comes in and is like, so you put the basketball team on. But. And I want to like reiterate, like these are like 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 they're great people. Listen, you know, I actually I actually when I saw my uncle, I talked to him about this, uh -huh. and I was like, so what? You like you like found like a loophole to get him out? And he goes, you mean the law? You mean the you mean the law, <laughs> and uh, I, on a certain level, it's like yeah, we all deserve a trial uh, with our peers. It's, yeah, it, you ha you you're a lawyer. You 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 have a job to defend your client to hey, the look, best of hey, your look, abilities. I, I'm sure I'm sure he was worth every penny. <laughs> I'm sure he was worth every penny. It's 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 wild. And it's I'm wild. sure you could catch. Bill Cosby soon at the Irvine Improv. <laughs> I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start a new uh, a new TV show with my uncle called "To Release a Predator." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you should have a podcast where you just have on comedians and the, he helps them get out of crime. It's like it's like such a weird thing because like it is intriguing to me at the same time. Mm -hmm. Like what a horrible thing that he's out, but also like cool. <laughs> yeah, that my all... that my uncle did it. it, it it feels like a feat. It, it, like that was like the guiltiest guilty of all guilties. I mean, Josh, there may be nobody better situated to open for him than you. <laughs> it's not <laughs> a got, crazy I've got ask. An I've this got dude, an, I've got he kind hand. of owes your uncle like everything. <laughs> so totally, I feel like you totally. could be like, "Hey, you remember how I got you off of like seventy-two rape charges?" Okay, here's a question for you, Kyle. My <laughs> Nephew. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Here's a question for you, Kyle. Cosby is performing. Mm -hmm. Someone's like, Kyle, I can get you in. Sold out. I can. I, it's sold out. Of course it's sold out. Of course, Kyle, we all want to know what he's going to No one say. will know you're there. There's like a secret room with mirrored sure. windows. Yeah. You can watch. Uh -huh. Free ticket. You're not even giving him any money. You want that? You want that? You want that ticket into the private room where no one sees you're there and you watch the cause? Listen. I'm soaking up every little drop of of moment I could see in that because I'm taking <laughs> intel. Yeah, I'm yeah. gathering intel. This is pure research. You're seeing who's there. Oh yeah, through the window. Oh, I'm seeing who's laughing. I'm seeing. Who's... I want to see how hard he's killing because he will kill. If he I comes mean, back. he will kill. Look, look. It's, it wasn't. It wasn't that he wasn't a good. He wasn't thrown in jail for not being a good I, comedian. I, you know, we're all <laughs> saying it, right? You know, back in back in the Renaissance, <laughs> Caravaggio like straight up murdered people. He's like, I won't paint from prison. They're like, let him out. <laughs> <laughs> So this has been happening, and his this, and his lawyer's name this, Edelman. No, I, I, I want to. I want to also. I want to also specify that this part of my family is not Jewish. Wow. Yeah, I know. I wow. know. So really Wasn't jumping in on the lawyer. Jewish stereotype, yeah. being lawyer, being creepy lawyers. No, smashing no, matzah ceiling. This is some straight up Christian. <laughs> I mean, Catholic. This is like some straight oh, up Catholic. Oh, nice. Hell yeah. Well, family. the Catholics know about forgiveness. <laughs> <laughs> they made sure to bake that shit in right away. Definitely, definitely. <laughs>
they were like, you're going to have to forgive us a lot. <laughs> God. There's going <laughs> like, to be. We're going to need <laughs> some clear boundaries honestly, and rules honestly, on how to like, constantly forgive the fucked up shit we're going to Honestly, do. the cause is part of the Catholic cause, if you really think about it. <laughs> Fighting for the same thing many many of our many of our legendary <laughs> priests and popes have been uh, have been guilty of themselves. So who are they to judge? Yeah, the church is like, what you need to do is just move Cosby to a different comedy club. Mm. <laughs> That's all that needs to happen. Kyle, it's great to have you on the show. I know I tried to have you back at like your peak like moment in the in the sun <laughs> but also yeah, one of the most yeah. terrifying times Definitely. of your life i can only imagine um d- here's a question for you so 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 Kyle made a documentary about Crystalia, which blew the fuck up like ASAP uh, the moment he released it on YouTube. Um, but it was not your first documentary. And no. and I've also since like checked out some of your others and, and they're excellent. You've been doing this for a while. You're really good at it. Yeah, I, uh, um, I've been doing them since I was I went to film school and stuff. In cool. Where did you go to film school? Uh, in Vegas, uh, College of Southern Nevada. OK, um, cool. It's we got to them to drop community out of the <laughs> so it sounds like a real college. Now, are um, you from Vegas? Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. I was just raised. in Vegas on Saturday. Yeah, um, yeah. I was. That was cool. Uh, I, yeah, no. I love Vegas. Um, I started comedy out there. I go back out there all the time. But yeah, no. I started uh, doing docs like in film school. One of my favorite classes was ended up being documentary. And Which like this documentary, even... like the thing you want to do, do you do you, do you do you fantasize about being a narrative filmmaker, or are you like kind of like I'm loving this doc that game? I would I would love to write for television ultimately. Okay, but um, I think like documentary is something that um, I've just found that I have like a, a knack and a voice for, and like and have fun doing. Um, so the so, Dalia ones by far your most successful. Yeah, yeah. I have another one that's like decently as like around the Dalia one has like a million views. I have another one with around like three hundred thousand. That does pretty good. Oh, okay, that's pretty dope. And then I have another one that has like almost. 100, What's the three hundred thousand one? So <clears throat> I made it about uh, there's there's like targeted ads that mm-hmm. you get for app games, like the pull the gold pin. And okay. Then, like, the lava will come yeah, down. Yeah, or yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. those games don't exist. Yeah, I know because I've downloaded. Yeah, so them So they're before. not. They're totally not real. Yeah. <clears throat> you download it and it's a different, totally, totally different, different game. game. And you're like, when um, do I get to pull the pin? Right. Exactly. And so <laughs> I think maybe this I is one a, of the ones I watched them like right around the time. Yeah, I did. I did a huge deep dive on it and like figured out what companies like make these fake ads. How like the business model works? What? How does the business model work? Give <clears throat> us like a brief taste so that people Basic, want to go. Basically, by the yeah. way, how hot did it get in here? Since I <laughs> it's these? already incredible. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just like drinking hot coffee and like <laughs> wearing a. That's shirt. part of the whole process uh, of my podcast. Slowly sway you out and then get some of the dirty details. Yeah, exactly. Of your life. No, anything um, to get out of here. You become like a hostage. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Cosby's innocent. <laughs> <laughs> Let me out of here. Um, yeah, no. Uh, basically, the way it works is that by far the cheapest and easiest game to make levels for is uh, those like match three games. Okay, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Where yeah. you like get just make a match because you can mm-hmm. basically like AI generate those levels. Um, and these games, the the biggest thing is you just need levels so that people feel like they're constantly accomplishing things. And then after each level, they watch an ad. Mm-hmm. Right. Most of these ads, half the time, are for other shitty apps. Yeah. Like, where does any of the money come? Like, so it's like, like it's a huge economy of just all this shit. But because I'm like, I'm never pay. giving any money to anything. Right. But you're watching stuff which can be good for ad revenue for these guys, or a lot of people will buy the ad free version, or they'll buy skins. I or guess I bought pass. an ad free version. Right. Here. And so there. so they'll so so basically it becomes this like huge economy. It's like a billion dollar economy, and. The only people that are really truly making out with any like hard cash is like Google and Facebook. Okay, of course. So they continue to run the ads like crazy. Like the funniest thing is on that video, I say in the video, I'm like, I'm going to put in the maximum amount of ads that YouTube will let me comment if it's one of these fake app games is advertising on the video because it has the right keywords and in, in the tags i'm gonna put mm-hmm. in it and like almost every comment's like yep got a tag got a got a thing for this <laughs> game got an ad for this game like the 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 algorithm is so dumb it'll place ads in stuff that is like clearly making fun of that product do you make <laughs> do you make money off of the youtube channel a little bit it's really not i i don't make videos regularly not, yeah. enough to like 
be making that's any the problem real money. with our current ecosystem is it's not a quality driven economy right. it's a it's a quantity driven if, if i made a video every week if i upload a video every week i could probably make like pretty decent money on there mm -hmm. but i probably only make like i make like probably 200 bucks a month on, yeah, on still, there. still nice i didn't nice. i didn't monetize the delia video I, at all either yeah yeah yeah. i figured i figured yeah. uh but you know the, a nice date you can take uh, an of age woman on <laughs> yeah exactly there you go. Yeah, 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 <laughs> with yeah. your youtube money or two underage women <laughs> Or two underage, yeah, yeah, exactly. They're cheaper dates. Exactly. Well, there was that Chris Rock bit. I loved that in uh, in his last special, which I didn't particularly love, but I like the bit. I didn't see he, it. What was the bit? Uh, he was talking about how like how like young girls these dates are like. Can you give me some shoes, Chris? I just want these shoes. Can you give me these nice shoes? And then like they wear the shoes for you. It's like you date an older woman. It's like he fixed my roof. <laughs> <laughs> that's a really funny. I like that because that's a very. Uh... Like, that's only an experience he would have. <laughs> like, I would never, I feel like I'd never date a woman who would ask me to fix a roof, but that is something I'm sure Chris Rock would run into. Now, while I won't capitalize <laughs> as much on the immediate, like, boom of the pod, I, having you on now has given me enough time to learn about any of the fallout yeah. that's coming. What's the fallout? What's going on? I mean, there there hasn't been that crazy a fall. I could tell you, I'll tell you off camera, Are you... a couple people that have like said some things. Oh, but oh no, no. I, I mean, more I like just... like any legal issues. Oh, no. no. No, no. No legal fallout at all. Um, No attempts to like get it shut down, taken he, off? He had one. Uh, they tried to take it off my YouTube for copyright. They actually copyright claimed the only the only seven seconds they could copyright claim out of the entire video because everything else was like fair use because of how I edited it and everything. Uh, even this was fair use, but they were just being dumb. But the, the part that they actually claimed was when I played his apology mm. to like give him a little benefit of the doubt. Like, here's him saying he didn't do it. And, <laughs> and you're, were like, like, you're like, you're take like, take that shit out. <laughs> Did you take it out? No. Because oh, oh. YouTube was like, you're good. YouTube yeah, yeah. told them almost immediately, like, no. Damn. And then they're so, they don't even, they're so dumb, they didn't realize that YouTube sends me a copy of everything that they sent to YouTube also. Man, I made such a far less successful <laughs> po uh, documentary I spend way more time and money on that I'm having just the utmost legal issues. Really? Yeah, I'm, I've been in like a year and a half long lawsuit wow. for my documentary what? with the person who worked on it. Oh, okay. um, so it's, sounds, one of, it's one of those yeah. nightmares. Yeah. Uh, I, can't, I can't really talk about it that much yet because it's still going on. Damn. Here's the here's the interesting thing I've learned. Like, like number one lesson. I've learned uh, about making anything with anyone. Now, in film school, something I was told repeatedly, something I'm sure you were told repeatedly, and a wonderful piece of advice is always make sure to get a contract no matter how good a friend you are with the person, et cetera. Did that. Got the contract. Pretty much very explicit. What they don't tell you and what I'm going to tell you is that all that contract is good for is that if you're dealing with a lunatic, after two or three years of going to court, you'll win. <laughs> but you'll uh, still have to go to court. You still, yeah. there's no yeah. just like you show the judge the contract and he's like, like oh yeah, good job. This is this yeah. is it. It's like, <laughs> all right, well, let's hear what everyone has to say about this. And it'll sure it'll ruin his life longer, but it's made mine miserable. <laughs> See, I've I've been very lucky and I've made I've made quite a few documentaries that I really thought were going to get like some legal pushback. Like I was very worried. Well, YouTube actually still has for rental still has the movie. Mm -hmm. Um but I had had like it got on Amazon and then he complained to Amazon wow. and that's why I'm actually having had to sue him to stop claiming ownership of the film. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, no. I uh I I just did <clears throat> I just did a documentary about China. Um, I'm excited about this because I fucking so, hate them. Yeah, so <laughs> so about about two years ago, I did a documentary about Falun Gong. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar oh, yeah, with them yeah, at yeah. all? I used okay. to see them all the time in New York on yeah, the streets yeah. okay, cool. doing like yoga so and for anyone for who money. doesn't, Or anyone who doesn't know, they do like the Tai Chi and shit. And they also, if you've ever seen Shen Yun, like the ballet recitals, those like- They kind of does. I don't see them around. in New York anymore. Um, I'm sure you have no more why than I do. They're around, but- <clears throat> uh, that basically, well, uh, when I was in college in New York, everywhere? all over the place, everywhere, all the time. What year was that? Uh, 2004 like to 2007. Okay, yeah, that would have been when they were like really picking up steam. Um, yeah, so so Falun Gong is basically 
a Chinese religious cult. Um, they worship this dude named Lee Hansing who's like says he can like levitate and like can cure cancer by like blinking at you and like, you know, <laughs> like crazy, right? Um, and they're like a ball- they're like a performing arts cult. So they have this big ballet company called Shen Yun that like tours the country. It always blows my mind when like the cult, you know, it's like I can get behind a lot of this cult stuff and then like he'll blink at you and your cancer will be cured. And it's like it's like that and like you guys didn't stop there. That wasn't the like yeah. all right. I moment. mean when he when he's <laughs> sitting there, they they do one interview with him that it's I like watch they're doing where, yoga, they're getting in yeah, shape, yeah. it's they're all dressed in these outfits, it looks nice, they seem they seem like decent but, but then like I'll blink at you and your cancer will go away. <laughs> They're like, wait a minute here. No, right. none of that ever. Well, it, it's also like the, the levitating thing is probably one of the funniest things a person can claim because everybody, whenever anyone has been like, I can levitate, people are like, then do it. And they're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not for your eyes. Yeah, I levitate for me. Not for men. That being said, I can levitate. I'm not going to do it here. But, <laughs> yeah, I will. But, uh, yeah, but, but trust me, I can. <laughs> After when the podcast yeah, is yeah. off. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, basically, I did this this documentary on Falun Gong because um, Falun Gong uh, like funds Epoch Times, which is this like right wing. They fund Epoch Times. Yeah. So <sighs> Epoch Times is like almost the completely fucking web. The yeah. web. Uh, and they hate China, so they love Trump. So they went like super right wing. Yeah, but after I don't really like Trump China style. or Trump. Exactly. Or Epoch well, Times. Welcome to the club, brother. I, I didn't really know. Ooh. I didn't really know much about the Falun Dafa other than I figured China got the rest of them once I stopped seeing them dancing around New York. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, <laughs> so, so basically, China also has these like little outposts. They call them like outreach centers or whatever. But uh, people claim that they're basically like little off china because they'll be in like new york or la like major cities but they'll be like these like basically chinese police that'll go and like rough up like falun gong members and shit like that like supposedly right um now is this falun gong guy like a threat to xi jinping and the chinese government or they just view any like they're like let's stop it while it's small in in the 90s they claim that they had 70 million members and that china put the kibosh on them because people were starting to like look to Lee Hansing more than the government, right? Because uh, I believe in China, religion is not allowed. I it, believe, oh, I don't know. or it only sounds, like government sounds approved right. religions. I, I, but, you know, I keep hearing things, but I don't know what's true. I read yeah, a lot. That's of, the other thing. Because I read, so I read hard. a lot of Epoch Times. There's. Um, <laughs> But like I read a thing recently about Epoch like Epoch Times will be like no breathing in China. Breathing yeah, is not allowed. Did you guys know that? You're not allowed to breathe in China. Um I mean it's it's not easy to breathe in China. Yeah, it's uh, hard though. <laughs> it's definitely I don't know if it's illegal, but it's a struggle. Um <laughs> But uh but um, I read a thing like about a comedian who got like fined two million dollars for making a joke about the military, and then I heard that like comedy was like temporarily or permanently banned in China. That, that, that because- comedian was Tony Hinchcliffe, and it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, sorry. Before we continue, well, no, no, we I, I I got time before I have to do it. Okay. Um, but um, okay, go on. I want to hear more about. So, What's happening? So basically, uh, I, I made this documentary about Falun Gong and sort of about how uh, it's so hard to get, like you were saying, it's In so hard to get information about. I would have fucking ate the stock. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's so hard to get information about what's happening in China because there's like, you know, things like Falun Gong create so much misinformation because I'm sure the Chinese government did treat them like shit. I'm sh- I'm, I'm positive. I'm sure they yeah. did. Yeah, but no also they're like mind. they're like they have harvested seventy million people's organs. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't believe that they did ten holocausts. Maybe, maybe they did. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But they're like they did. Well, uh, they probably did because all those organs were cancer free. <laughs> 
<laughs> so if you're gonna harvest organs, yeah, you gotta get grab one. them. They have that guy in like one of those Minority Report <laughs> tanks. They just bring organs in front of them, and he blinks, and then they <laughs> yeah. put them into into Chinese diplomats' bodies. Yeah, he blinks, no cancer, you're good. Levitates <laughs> them. They never have to touch any ice or anything. No, he's like in a floating like orb, like like that head in Power Rangers. Yeah, it's yeah. just the head in Power this Rangers, is like a back to tank. <laughs> So, this so I made horrible. this documentary about uh, Falun Gong, and uh, it was very critical of Falun Gong. It was very critical of, of the Chinese government um, as well. But then, uh, flash forward to a few months ago, I get contacted by the Chinese government. Whoa, that's scary as fuck. Yeah, so they email me, and I can read you the emails. I can show them to you. You can put them up on the screen, whatever. They email me, um, and I made a whole doc on my on my channel about this. Uh, and they want me; they want to pay me to like be an influencer and like make anti Falun Gong propaganda because they feel like your documentary is anti Falun Gong yes. more than it's anti Chinese yes. government. Exactly. And they're hoping that how I much will money like, are they offering? So they, I put out. I was like, I was like six hundred bucks because I wanted. I more than anything, I wanted to be able to make the video about doing this. So I didn't want to scare them away with too high of a price point. They're definitely but watching I'm like, this. But They're I'm, listening to this right now. Oh, yeah. It's not even In uploaded fact, yet. Hello, <laughs> You pull out a, a, a Ruger and you're like... I put, peel off like uh, fake eyelids. <laughs> so... Um, we got him. Yeah, we got him. Winnie... <laughs> This is Charlie to Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> Can't do that, bro. Um, so, so basically, I decided that I was going to uh, that I was going to make a video. I was going to make the propaganda they asked me to make, and make it purposefully bomb on YouTube, and then immediately upload a video about making propaganda for China right afterwards. Um, so that's what I did. I made this propaganda video. They also they paid me more. They paid me three hundred extra dollars for notes. For a round of revisions, um, where they were like, "Could you include like ten seconds of a guy lighting himself on fire?" <laughs> <laughs> like the notes were insane, and uh, it was it was interesting. I also I had Chat GPT like create the whole video script, um, so it was like no work. And then I put like the longest I I would put like twenty second, thirty second stock footage clips. Like the video, the fake video I made for them took me like ten minutes to edit. <laughs> Like, it's so low effort. And I even put in, like, I put text being like, how are you watching this? <laughs> like, in the middle of it and stuff. And I even did the voiceover I did, like, with as low energy as a voice reading as I possibly could just to make people not even want to watch more. Like, I did everything. And then in the, the tags for the video, I put, like, sexual tags and stuff so that it would, like, be hurt in the algorithm. I, like, I turned comments off. I did all these things in the propaganda video to make sure it would just fucking bomb like did it bomb? On oh yeah they it only has seven thousand views because they've bought views on it his his <laughs> video that bombed has thousands of more views than any of my youtube <laughs> videos oh it did it did horrible i think it, it i think it got 300 organic views <laughs> The rest of them China bought. I think that's around my my average yeah. organic. I'll, Maybe that's I'll, actually, buy, I'll actually, buy you. I would take three hundred organic views on all my videos right <laughs> that's now. That's a good. That's a good. You know. <laughs> oh, suddenly his tune changes once I tell. Oh no, three hundred is good. <laughs> well, no, 300, 300 on everything you put up doesn't mean you have like a decent little following that is growing. So that's good. <laughs> my podcast doesn't get three hundred listens. I'll no, <laughs> no, I think I've like was had a moment there where I was getting like two hundred YouTube video mm -hmm. views on my podcast and like fifty downloads. Now it kind of goes. Blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Um, but, but I do I do a, I do a movie one, so it's like if the movie is more popular, I seem to get more mm, like cool. based on what I you know. Yeah, that makes like sense. Cover. That makes sense. Um, um, okay, so so I basically I trolled the Chinese government for like three weeks, and then uh, what's amazing why I didn't get to put in the video is that like the their reaction. Yeah. Um, so I haven't talked about this on anything yet. So you're getting a juicy scoop here. Fuck, dude. So the Chinese government, it took them about 10 days to realize that I had uploaded a second video. Uh-huh. Like the real video. Uh-huh. 
and then they were furious. Yeah. Do you want me to read the email? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna pull it up. Oh God. Oh, let me find this it. is this <clears throat> is this is better than my letter. <laughs> <laughs> At the end, they're just like, and we got off Cosby. <laughs> Hold on, I think they put urgent in the. They're like the threatening subject. to. <laughs> yeah, here it is. Urgent, please reply. Oh. Hi, Kyle. This is Susie. I saw another video posted on your channel. I went undercover to make propaganda, and I'm shocked and dismayed at what's in it. <laughs> I don't know why you're posting information about our collaboration. It's unethical and illegal. It's not. The contracts that I signed, I put in my video, they are like the most nothing of contracts ever. They signed it with their just their first name, Cassie. So I just, and it looks like it was written in crayon, so I just wrote in crayon on the contract, too. I wrote Kyle. <laughs> Just my first name. Um, uh, it's unethical and illegal. And the information you've presented in the video is also untrue and could cause us a lot of trouble. First of all, I'd like to reiterate that we do not represent the government and are not affiliated with the Water Call Agency, both of which are like clear lies that I've disproven. <laughs> there. And there are other emails they're telling me they're with the Chinese government. There are, there are emails like at definitely not the water call agency. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Susie at definitely not water call yeah, agency. And, and, for, and for context, water call is a company that um, sort of does KOL is a kind of uh, like information organization tactic on online to sort of like like just analytics and what is a word in Chinese and what a call is like what a call is literally who paid me okay. so it's like for them to <laughs> say that we don't we don't even work with what a call is like well then why did what a call pay me every time you guys paid me um <laughs> which like also what a call is like pretty clearly Chinese government affiliated um uh the contract we signed with you was also not confirmed by any government organization, and you can't make a connection between us and the government through your own subjective judgment, which, again, I didn't. In their emails, they literally told me they represent the Chinese government. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like, that's what I quoted. Uh, secondly, we found when we saw your video, you had objective statements about Falun Gong in your previous video. So we said up front that we would respect your content creation and did not interfere more with the production of your video content. That is like a nothing sentence. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what they're trying to say. And there. they asked you to throw in videos of people yeah, lighting themselves all, on fire. So they're being like, we didn't even, your journalistic integrity was intact, bro. <laughs> it's like, no, it wasn't. <laughs> uh, also, it's unethical and illegal for you to put our communications online. No, it's not. You could put your emails. I put like all the screenshots of my emails with them online just to show people. And what was so funny is I still had people saying the video was fake. I did. I put all the screenshots of my emails. I put all the screenshots of my PayPal receipts from them. And people are still like fake. And I'm like, I don't know what more I can show. This is literally <laughs> all they communicated to me. Uh, because we don't have a PayPal account, one of our members is in Hong Kong and he recommended what a call to pay you to help us with payment on our behalf. Uh, now that this agency is involved in your video, there's a good chance we will be sued by them. Finally, we don't object to you posting such a video, but we need you to report it as facts and this one as fake. If you agree, please change the content of this video without mentioning the government or what a call. <laughs> Oh, so they're geez. like, hey, just you can put up this video about how you're, we're the government. Just don't talk about the government. Fuck. <laughs> like, right. well, give me a so I just got to do an ad read real Let's quick, and then uh, we'll get back into the show. Today's episode of the Jew Rogaine Experience is brought to you by the What A Call Agency <laughs> in China. What A Call. Don't mess with us. That's what they, uh, that's their tagline. What a call. Providing truth, objective truth about the goings on in China at this very time. Do you have any information on the Falun Dafa and their practices? Please contact the What a Call agency today. Also, do you by chance know of the whereabouts of comedian slash documentary filmmaker Kyle Anderson? Any information as to where he can be found will be uh, will be greeted with a great reward. What a call! Uh, what's the call you should make? A call to what a call? <laughs> Promo code Jurogain. Promo code Jurogain. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, that is so fucking funny. <laughs> I really thought you were going to do a real ad read. That's like, oh, what, that's what, what it says. That's what it says right there. <laughs> Like, I did listen. We have a producer. We have, I, we have, we have, I just get these. We have, I don't three, we have three ads. We have three ads. We have to do every show. I got two more. They'll they'll come before the end. Uh, I just listen. Listen. I'm not. I'm. Uh, they paid me. Uh, oh, I'm also supposed to mention that I got another. Um, what a call! Did you guys know the Falun Dafa light themselves on fire? Uh, what a call! I'm not laughing at them lighting themselves on fire. I'm laughing at the great bit, you guys. Uh, I, 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 no bit. No bit. No this, bit. This is, this is, we would never do a listen, bit. Listen, I just want what a call to know. I am happy to take their money to say whatever the fuck they want on my show. I will not bury it like some people. I will not come out with a propaganda video, a fake, a fake propaganda video. Like some people, and I'll do it for slightly less money than some people took to promote your brand. <laughs> so in, at the end of the video, I take the, uh, I got $900 in total from them, and I went to a Taiwanese restaurant um, here in LA that has these hats that say, I heart Taiwan. So I end the video like eating Taiwanese food oh, on China's man. dime. <laughs> man, so I have a, you know, <laughs> This is going to be bad. This is bad. This is like the part I'm probably going to cut out of this episode. I don't okay, normally cool. do editing, but but everyone <laughs> so get your n words in now. Every kids. Well, uh, close. <laughs> Every once in a while, I, I talk about something. I'm like, no, I don't have the bravery yet. But I'm going to say, like, if there's anything I miss, if there's anything that's become not PC, that like, man, I wish we could have that one back. Uh -huh. It's it's Asian voice, specifically Chinese <sighs> Asian voice. Yeah, and I have a bunch of great bits I can do that involve it that I can't do. And it's not that the voice itself is funny, it's the content. For example, mm -hmm. um, John Cena. Remember yes. how he had to apologize to China? Yes. For um, for saying Taiwan for, was real. For saying real. Taiwan was real. They wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. They threatened to not show Fast and the Furious in China, which was going to make back all of its three hundred million dollar budget. So John Cena went on TV and apologized in Taiwanese to the Chinese government. A Taiwanese or Mandarin. He apologized in some language. <laughs> That. When I was watching Fast Ten, my buddy, I was I was there with a uh, Austin comic Sean Riley, and there was a part in the movie where John Cena, he's like with the little kid, mm -hmm. uh, and he looks over at the kid, and there's just a moment where he doesn't say anything for a second. My buddy just goes, "Shashi." <laughs> <laughs> So so I kept thinking, like, when I saw that, I was like, China fucking owns us. Yeah. They own us. And you know how I know that they own us? Because John Cena looks like a human incarnation of what, like, Chinese propaganda of what America looks like would be. Totally. And it's like, let's get the big... I'm not going to do it in the Asian voice, which is even funnier, but let's get the big, strong American man to go on TV and apologize to China for saying Taiwan a country it was over yeah. it was over he's john cena is so is so fascinating because he started learning chinese he just decided he was gonna like be a chinese movie i star. think it's chinese propaganda that asian voice is no longer allowed yeah. like 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 why can we <laughs> uh do you know jeremy mckiernan yeah. Uh, Jeremy has a great bit. It's like my favorite bit of his. I wish Jeremy would get back into doing comedy. Jeremy's one of the only people who like quit comedy that I'm like, I bet you unquit. Uh, uh, Jeremy has a great bit about it. He's like, he's like, yeah, I do a lot of improv, but you know, it's weird today because it's like, you know, I'll do a scene and uh, someone in the scene plays an Italian well, a waiter, and they come in like, hello, welcome to the Italian restaurant. My name is Giuseppe. Can I take a your order? And then later in that same Herald, they'd be at a Chinese restaurant. So I'll come out and go, hello, welcome to the Chinese restaurant. My name is David. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been, I've been working on a, a stand-up bit about how... Uh, how like one of the worst things racists have taken from us is funny voices. Yeah, yeah. Just like, uh, can we just like, <laughs> can we just do funny voices and not be filled with hatred? Right. I say this. Meanwhile, every anti-Semitic thing I see, I'm like, you fucking piece of shit, <laughs> motherfucker. I will use all of my power in Hollywood to bury you. To bury you. Do you know who my Christian uncle is? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, so, so I get it. I get it, but uh, I think there's a there's a um, he was like a YouTuber, uh, Chris Baker, uh, Brian Baker, something like that. 
and he he would make these like YouTube he would make uh, song parodies, mm-hmm. and they would be like at the same quality as the actual music video and they would come out like his anaconda one came out like two days after anaconda okay like he had like he knew she was putting out videos so he had like actresses right like he had everything ready like and they were like incredible production value they'd get millions of views and then when youtube's algorithm changed from being like uh you know quantity versus quality right he now would have to put out a video every like two or three days whether or not a new big music video dropped or not whether or not he had a good idea so his channel was like in free fall and he's making like no money and he signs this massive deal with the the chinese side of tiktok so like whatever, <laughs> whatever it's called over there it's mm-hmm. not it's not called uh tiktok i forget what it's like weibo or something um and he signs this like multi-billion dollar contract and he now lives in china and like has to contractually make like 12 like pro china tiktoks a day and like during COVID, it was like him calling his parents and he was getting his parents to be in them. And it was him being them being like, we're so scared in America. Everybody's getting sick and dying. Can we come to China? And he's like, no, mom and dad, you should have supported China from the beginning. Like me, like, it, the videos are bizarre, bro. Dude, well, you know, uh, there's a great. I don't know if it's a document. The story of like the filmmaker in that got kidnapped by North Korea. Do you know about yeah, that story? It was like a National Geographic or something. Something, but so but, good. but when they talked to him, he was like, and they had like a whole daring escape and everything. But he also said like those years of making movies in North Korea were some of the best and most creatively fulfilling years of his life because they give him like the entire government's budget to like make he whatever would, he wanted as long as it supported the uh, yeah. Yeah, he made a um, like their version of Godzilla. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, that, that, I, I still think that whole story would be such a great movie. Totally, like somebody needs to make that. Movie. Totally, totally. Yeah, I dare you, Seth Rogen and uh, <laughs> James Franco again. Let's see you do it. You got the balls, James. It, it, it like came out in the Sony leak that that was like all fake. Oh, was it? That, I that, think that, that that was all fake. Yeah. That what was all fake? The the whole like remember when they were, like North Korea was mad about the interview oh, and yeah, like yeah, wouldn't yeah. let it be released or whatever. That was like all made up by Sony to like get people like in a tizzy. Oh really? Yeah. What what Sony leak is this? That was when you remember when like all their emails got leaked like by the way, two wasn't or three that, years ago. Was that separate? Was that a different thing than when the interview came out? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was more recent. That oh. was also one of my favorite things from that review is what a uh, an executive said the Spider-Man movie should be like. <laughs> and the executive was like, I just got back from EDC and I think Spider-Man should be into electronic dance music. <laughs> <laughs> did they try that with Tobey Maguire and Spider-Man 3 and it right, didn't work? Like, <laughs> walking around at Coachella pointing at girls. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, was that also where the Harriet Tubman thing came out about What's like Harriet Tubman thing? oh that like one of the executives for the Harriet Tubman movie suggested Julia Roberts for Harriet <laughs> Th- which which I completely which is like a funny thing that I completely understand how it happened because it's like that guy rose to prominence probably by having his go to just suggest Julia Roberts for anything move because when's that gonna fail right. when's the suggest Julia Ro- it's like hey he's who suggested Julia Roberts Roberts, my best friend's wedding kicked ass. That was Tom. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out you, you no shouldn't idea. do that in the Oprah pitch meeting. <laughs> he has no idea who Harriet Tubman is. He's like, what about Julia Roberts? <laughs> it's like, how do we feel about Channing for Harriet? <laughs> like, I don't think he should. <laughs> Um, They're like, what can't Clooney do? You know, <laughs> man, everything. This world's like, like you know. Still, I, we all, all of you fucking listeners out there. See, I pretty much listen. I have no friends anymore. This mm-hmm. is like the only conversations I have anymore. I, like that. I have people come over. And I'm like, let's have a conversation. We'll record it and we'll release it to the public, so it can't take me down. That reminds me <laughs> of one of the saddest things I've ever heard. What? Uh, a I was on. I was doing a, a club in Vegas. And this like road dog was like headlining this like dude who just like headlines like it's all he's been like headlining for like twenty years you know just a road dude and he's like so the saddest thing he's ever heard involves someone whose life is slightly better than mine <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone who's living our dream someone who's living um, the saddest story ever is yeah. this guy who's living our literal <laughs> dream yeah uh, so he says he he said to me he goes mm, some days. The only things you say out loud are your set and your food order. <laughs> and 
I was like, Jesus Christ, bro. <laughs> that is that is fucking wild. <laughs> right? <laughs> I've like never stopped thinking about that. <laughs> There were like days, I forget what it was, but it was just like I noticed that like I hadn't spoken until I got to an open mic. Like, like Ooh, I just like, yeah. and then like the first, and I open my mouth on the stage, and I go, that's the first thing I said today. <laughs> <laughs> that's the first out loud noise I made. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, I feel like I have my best sets like uh, after being around like friends or like fan, like people that I really enjoy being around and being like naturally. See, like I have funny, a funny like coming out of your shell like that. I feel like if I go from that to being on stage, I usually that's like kind of my my preferred. I find that when I'm so maybe this is a little different than that, but like when I'm at a show mm -hmm. and I'm backstage and I'm being hilarious backstage with all the comics and I'm just feeling it and I'm like I'm I'm too funny right now. Like where how, how am I going? How can anyone keep this going for so long? I have some of my worst sets after that. I like walk out too sure of myself. They're like, well, this guy thinks he's going to make us laugh. Nobody laugh at his jokes. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's too fucking cocky. I heard him back there making the comics laugh. Just because you think you can make them laugh, you can't make us laugh. We laugh at who we want. Hey, fuck you. <laughs> There's some shows that if you, if you killed with the green room, that's enough. Yeah, yeah. You know, you could walk away and be like, I'm fine with that. <laughs> I know, but I'm in the green room acting like I'm the only one who's not going to bomb. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. Totally. Uh, <laughs> what's, your, what's your favorite... Uh, What's your favorite like LA bomb? Did you start in LA? Where'd you start? Uh, technically, I started in New York, but like, yeah. it's such a hard thing to answer. Yeah. Like, where I start? Really, I didn't. I didn't really go hardcore into specifically stand up until 2018. Okay. That's when like I hit it hard, like the right way. Um, before then, there were tons of false starts. I like took a comedy class in New York and then did um, stand up at, like a bringer show once every few months, and that yeah. was it. Um, <laughs> El Clasico. El Clasico. <laughs> That's like the classic startup. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but uh, I mean, what's my favorite LA bomb? I don't know. I can tell you one while, while you're thinking. Yeah, yeah. Go. Well, I have, I have, I have two great bomb stories. They're both out of LA. Okay, but. well, that's fine too. I don't have to be in LA, but I had one when I moved, like right when I moved to LA, and this girl booked me out of the blue. I still don't know how she booked me. She like booked me like we had no mutual friends. I'm like, who is it? Whatever. Sure. I still think she must have thought I was a different Kylie Anderson. I have no fucking <laughs> idea. Um, so she booked me for this show out in Long Beach and I drive out. Mikey McKernan was there. You Love probably know Mikey. Mikey Love McKernan. Mikey. Uh, he witnessed this. Um, <laughs> and so I, I go, uh, I have like a 10 minute spot, right? Which I'm like, I'm stoked on. They, uh, I had just moved from Vegas where a bar crowd, like Vegas bar people, are like jaded, upset little lizard folk. They are mad. They're angry little like mountain troll people. Oh, I could also talk to you. Remind me about Blueberry Hill. Yes, Blueberry Hill. We gotta talk. Uh, we about gotta Blue talk about Blueberry Hill. I gotta Hill. tell you, my Blueberry what, 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 happened, what happened waitress, two days ago. What waitress did you come across a Blueberry Hill? <laughs> well, no, it was a whole fucking experience. I'm, I'm so sad. Um, we'll come back to Blueberry Hill. I've, I've had many a weird night at Blueberry Hill. Oh, one of the um, weirdest. One of the weirdest. Yeah. So, so I'm in a, a we're, we're in this like little bar, but the bar is right by the ocean. So I should I should have known like in in retrospect, I'm like, OK, these are going to be different people. But in my mind, I was like, OK, shitty little bar crowd. I know these types of people. I'm going to just go in. I'm going to do my shit. And I had an opening joke <clears throat> about, uh, you know, uh, what do I look like? Right. And so they I have like people shout out. Somebody shouted out. You look like the guy from Game of Thrones. Right. Now in a Vegas Odor? bar, uh, uh, the what, the fat one, I, I assume. I don't watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's funny. I keep like naming like Hodor, uh, Blinken, uh, yeah. blah blah, blah, and you're like, <laughs> his name is Blorco. <laughs> There's like a joke in a in a web series I made where I'm playing charades and I walk up and everyone's like fat bastard uh, <laughs> just starts like before I even start doing anything yeah, just yeah, start really swap funny. thing like just start that's shouting really like funny. the nastiest that's hilarious. <laughs> and I'm just like, well, I started um, fuck what was I saying sorry pizza the hut. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, oh yeah, yeah. So so I'm I'm on I I'm on stage and and I get this you know uh, Game of Thrones thing, and in a Vegas bar, if you had said so so what I say, I respond. I go Game of Thrones. I I don't watch that nerd shit, and which obviously I was gonna make a joke about that. I watch a ton of nerd shit. Uh-huh. Right? In a Vegas bar, people would have been like, "Fuck yeah, fuck, fuck that yeah, nerd fuck shit." Yours. Like that's what th- those people have done. In this bar in Long Beach, full of like rich dudes, they stood up like I said the N word. <laughs> they were so mad. People were like ready to like throw shit at the stage. People were like, it's a great show. <laughs> it's a fucking work of art. It's fucking cinematic purity, bro. <laughs> this is obviously before the final season. Yeah, I go, I go, I go, oh, I know, I know it's great. It's on uh, it's on HBO, right? It's like the nerdiest thing they've ever made. And uh, because I keep I'm trying to justify people like it's not nerd shit. It's on HBO. And I'm like, it's a it's a book about dragons. Like it is (laughs) like you can say you like it, but it is nerd shit. And uh, this guy stands up and he's like, I work for HBO, asshole. And he like leaves with his wife. And I am I cannot overstate. This is my first joke. (laughs) And then the crowd hates me. They hate me. Because I just made fun of their favorite show. Like, I guess they were there for a Game of Thrones fucking viewing party before the fucking show. Like, it was insane. And so I just, like, six minutes of just straight bombing. And then I'm like, I feel like you guys never forgave me for what I said about Game of Thrones. (laughs) And a couple people laugh at that. And I'm like, and you guys just aren't gonna, are you? And it's just dead quiet. And I, I do my other like two minutes and then I go I go off stage and uh, Mikey, who's seen me do well many times, is like, is like, buddy, they, they really like Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> and then the girl who books me, she comes up and she's like, hey, uh, how do we know each other? And I'm like, I don't I have no idea. <laughs> you got out of there so fucking because I would never book somebody who doesn't like Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. fucking piece She's of like, shit. She's like, because winter's coming, bitch. <laughs> you, she was like, hold the door. Is, yeah, uh, hold, hold that's, for, door. that's for yeah, the nerds yeah. watching. Um, that's actually funny to what I would... That's fun, it's interestingly similar to my worst bomb. Real quick, I'll just say, like, like the thing that jumped to my head in Los Angeles, it wasn't even, like, that horrible a bomb, but I just remember... Um, I find that my toughest audience, for me, mm-hmm. like, I can do well in lots of rooms, but the rooms I have the most trouble in are, like, cholo rooms. Really? Yes. And I remember, like, the first they time- They love my silly ass. The first time I did it, <laughs> I did, like, I opened up with a bit about how people tell me it's, like, brave that I do comedy, uh-huh. and, like, nobody laughs, and I just stop, and I look at them, and I go, you guys don't think it's brave doing comedy. <laughs> 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 That's so fucking uh, funny, and, and dude. Like, dude, next time you do a cholo room, just open with a Raiders joke, and they'll love you. Totally, totally. Yeah, I, you, I, ha- you have to. Listen, throw I, I feel a like I can bait. figure out how to do well in any room, but yeah. like I, I noticed that I've had some of my hardest struggles in like. I, I, I opened for Jamie Kennedy a lot, and he has because of Malibu's Most Wanted. He has a ton of cholo mm. fans, so like there'll be a good cholo subsect at like most of his shows. And the, the scariest part is that these dudes look fucking terrifying and they're like, they're not laughing. There's like mad dog in yeah, the yeah, whole yeah, set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then afterwards they come up to you and they look fucking pissed and they're like, good shit. You're fucking funny as fuck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, it, they're so hard. Um, <laughs> so there's that. Then there was like a week where I was just so. <laughs> So Rita, I love you. I love you. Love you, Rita. At the improv, um, pre-pandemic, I was winning like sets of the night on the regular. I won the very last set of the night before the nice. pandemic shut everything down. I was getting late night spots. Cut cool. to cut to uh, post-pandemic. I start producing my show on Discover Genius there, and like I meet with Rita about like doing the show, and she's like, "I've always thought of you as more of a producer," which like I'm like. It's, it like like you know the most backhanded diss compliment where and i've like won nothing since and like it got real in my head and i was like well next time rita sees me i'm gonna fucking crush this room and i had a straight week of like some of the best comedy i've ever done in my life just owning every show i was on i was getting like riff clips like nobody's business get up at the improv mic and just have like 
the it's like the first time she's seeing me since that have the worst bomb I've probably had in years. Just like, and I'm like, and like I'm up there knowing I'm doing, and it like shook me to my core. I like I have like a bad like oh. month of stand up uh, after that. <laughs> I've only I've only ever done the improv mic a couple of times. I need to go do it. more. By the way, love Rita. I, but, she uh, could do no it, wrong. That in my is eyes. that is one of those things like that or like a set of the night at like the store or something where it's like it's so scary to do one of those sets in front of like you're only doing it in front of your peers yeah you know what i mean like well it's, it's funny only... i always feel like it's like it's like i'll watch people it's like yeah i get it you guys are laughing at the total weirdo being insane up there yeah. like you don't care about my joke about how cats are democrats and dogs are republicans <laughs> right but right. it's a great fucking bit right <laughs> but they, they want to watch a lady in like a neck brace talk about how her husband died off of fentanyl or whatever. yeah yeah <laughs> The real thing that happened when I went to Third Wheel for the first time oh, in like geez. months and oh, months Jesus. the other night. Jesus. There was a lady in a neck brace who just kept saying that her husband died off of fentanyl, and then we kind of found out she killed her husband. Oh, oh. It was good crowd work. Uh, there. Yeah, it sounds like a good it crowd was, work it was, like, was it, it streaming? <laughs> was it on the Pro crowd work show? No, no. It was oh, just okay. late night. And what was so funny is like everybody's doing, the only thing getting any kind of reaction in this room is crowd work with this crazy Yeah, lady. the Midnight Mike at Third Wheel is just like it's the die. It's the diet. Yeah. It's the diet improv mic. Yeah. It's the improv mic with no booker that can do anything. For right. you. Yeah, exactly. It's the improv <laughs> mic with a popcorn machine. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So that like literally everyone is doing like just crowd work with this lady, and everyone who's doing crowd work with this lady is having a fun, good set. It's like just go up there That's and practice you crowd do. work. That's what right you gotta now. do. Like gotta right do. now is a great opportunity to practice crowd work. This lady is a gold mine. Everything she says is funny. Just learn how to set up. A crazy person in the crowd because that's a great skill you'll need that skill at tons of clubs you work that being said though i do think to myself like it's good to go up at the improv mic it's yeah. good to go up in that discomfort in that uncomfortable situation where the stress is on because like you want to make it in this biz you're going to be in situations that are considerably stressful mm -hmm. and you want to be somebody who's able to handle stressful situations dude even just like potluck the other night that's mm -hmm. such a stressful spot you know what i mean like i weirdly wasn't that stressful. You had a great set, by the way. I, I had a lot of fun. Are they bringing you, you back? Are they too. bringing you back? I have, I have no oh, idea. Oh, okay, okay. Um, <laughs> Thank God. If he was going to say yes, we'll go over <laughs> Fucking. No, I didn't. I, I've not been contacted yet. But, I, oh, did you get uh, Did you get any email from them? Did you get the email saying, I, I don't sign up? I email like, don't sign up yeah, again yeah, for three I, I saw an email from them, and I'm like, I'm back, baby. And then I looked at it, they're like, don't sign up again, you piece of shit. You worthless, <laughs> you worthless fucking desperate comic piece of shit. <laughs> But we know you got excited when you saw this. It, it, it's one of those <laughs> things of like, I, I've done it a few times and it is like, it gets less and less each time. But th the first time I was fucking nervous. Well, dude. it's funny at potluck because that was my first ever time. That's crazy. Getting up in five years That's of signing crazy. up. But like to me going up there, I was like, well, I've got my entire arsenal. Mm -hmm. I can do whatever I want. Mm -hmm. At the improv, I feel weird. I've done like two hours worth of different material on improv spots I've gotten on over the years. Wow. And like, it's in my head that like, and also at the potluck, there's a crowd of audience members. Right, there's a real crowd. There's a real crowd. I'm not yeah. worried about the people in the back, which is all the improv mic yep. is. So it's like, I'm, I'm com you put real people in front of me, I'm fine. Yeah. Uh, that you is the nice thing about potluck is there's real people and they, 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 they set it up now where they seat everybody first, which mm -hmm. I think is awesome. Um, cause it used to suck if you weren't towards the yeah. end of the list, you got nobody, you know, now it's like, you have a pretty, you have a great crowd the whole, mm -hmm. the whole time. So everybody I think is really set up for success there. <clears throat> uh, but my worst bomb would have to be one of two situations that okay. are both hilarious. One very similar to yours in a different way. Uh, in Florida, like mm. I'm, I'm from South Florida. Okay. So about an hour North of me, um, I did a show in, um, I forget the name of the town right now. But anyway, my parents come. They sit in the front row Worst, center. Dude. Of course. I just did of the course. Laugh Factory Vegas and my, my in-laws came and they, they paid the guy extra to, to sit, sit in the right front in row. The and I'm front, like, right in the why would front I ever row. Fucking this there. is my first time. This is my first time ever doing 30 minutes. I get on stage. I have no intention of doing anything political. I don't know how it happens, but within two minutes of my set, the maybe it was the name Edelman coming up from L.A. The whole room is chanting Trump at me. The whole room is going Trump, Trump, Trump. 
I look at my recorder. I see I'm two minutes into my set, and I just say to myself, you know what, Josh? You're not getting off this stage for 28 more minutes. You're going to do whatever it takes to stay up here. And for 28 minutes, I fucking fought with them to the end. I got one good laugh. I got one good laugh out of them about halfway through. I was like, it's a packed room. You're all paying attention to me. I'm not doing well. The only person I have to blame for this is Trump. And that, like, cracked them. That cracked them a little bit, and I got them for a little while. But they still just hated me the whole time. That's so funny, dude. It's it's so crazy how uh, how L.A. can really, like, change a crowd's whole perspective of you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just the, just the phrase L.A. when they bring you up. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I told this story recently on the pod, but it's also great. Uh, so when I took that stand-up class in New York, mm-hmm. I was like, obviously the teacher's favorite. Uh, the teacher, I mean, she didn't care. She's just a fucking comedian. She's like, all right, this guy's all right. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> but you know, we have the class show at Caroline's at the end. Yeah, big deal. And uh, it's thirty people in the class, mm-hmm. and they're all on the class show doing five minutes. Oh, God. So it's like the most horrible show you yeah. could go to in your life. First off. There's this one woman who on that show crushed harder than I've ever seen anyone crush before in my entire life. She took the class because she had horrific stage fright that she was trying to get over. And she gets on stage and she is losing her shit. And she's just going out there. She's like, I took this class because I have horrible stage fright and I'm trying to get over it. And I, I, and like, it is murdering because it's so honest. Yeah. It's so like she's clearly having a meltdown and she's literally just talking about how her reason for doing it is oh, because shit. she has this that stage rules. fright. People are rolling out of their seats. Like I've never seen That's someone amazing. crush so fucking hard in my life. I meanwhile all cocky that I'm the best one on the show am up second to last because this woman on the show, Tanya brought like 40 people. So they're the audience and Tanya is last to keep them there for all 30 people. These people are sick and tired of horrible comedy when I get introduced. And as I'm coming up to the stage, a mutiny breaks out and people start first time ever performing live. They're like, Where's Tanya? We want Tanya. We want Tanya. We want Tanya. And I'm like walking out to do my first set. I just go, uh, hi, I'm Tanya. And that gets a laugh, but then they don't fucking give a shit about me. They're like, wait a second. No, (laughs) you're not. not. You're not Tanya. We know Tanya. (laughs) So so um, those would probably count as my like worst (sighs) bombs in worst bombs that were like memorable. There's there's been a couple times when I've been featuring for for Jamie and the host will be like, "Are you guys hype for Jamie fucking Kennedy?" And the crowd's like, "Yeah." He's well, here like, comes Kyle. Make it loud, and they're like, "Yeah." And they're like, "All right, you're featured comedian." Crowds don't know what that means, <laughs> so they think featured comedian means like the guy featured on all the flyers or whatever. So they're like fucking hype. They're like Kyle Anderson. Everyone's like, "What?" <laughs> and then they're like so confused for getting in my set because they're like, is Jamie not here? Like, <laughs> they like, don't understand what's happening. Dude, I mean, you know, I feel like at this point I've gotten to a play. I mean, look, bombs happen, but they just like what I consider a bomb at this point. I haven't had like a set on a show in a long time that I felt flat out no. fucking Suck. No, I've been on bad shows where it's just like, okay, clearly nothing's rough happening. Rooms. Yeah, rough room. Yeah, but it's not like, I, I feel like those are, uh, I saw, I did see a tweet a couple days ago that was like, the fun thing about comedy is the, the next bomb's always out there waiting for you and you're going to discover it. It is. You know? And that's, like, the, that's <laughs> the other fucking thing about this industry is like, man, you know, I've had three shows in a row now where I'm just like, why aren't I famous? <laughs> Why aren't I famous yet? Right, I've been right. I've been fucking tearing so you'll get humbled this soon. fucking town apart. <laughs> I just happen. know. Like I said, like that like that Hollywood improv mic where I was just on fucking fire. Like literally, yeah. you can find this chunk in the middle of my Instagram of me just doing like amazing crowd work clips where I was just so loose. I'm going on to five minute shows and like just owning it. That like once that stops was the moment I had that just horrific bomb at the improv that like shook me to my my core. It's so weird how that stuff will like um will just like get in your head. You know what I mean? 
All right, so uh, two more ads that I got to do, and then then we're going to wrap up the show. Um, Today's show is sponsored by the Falun Dafa. Do you have cancer? Uh, Don't go to Kaiser Permanente. Don't tell your insurance. Head down to China and see the Falun Dafa's Grand Wizard, (laughs) who uh, will blink at your cancer and make it go away. Uh, I had cancer a little while ago. I went down to China. Uh, he blinked at it, and it has been gone. He actually he lives in New York. It, now. it, it has been. So you don't oh, even uh, have to go to China. I don't even have to go to China. Go upstate. So who was this guy that blinked at my cancer? <laughs> I went all the way to fucking China for some guy that's not even him to blink at my cancer. Well, whatever that guy was, he healed my cancer. Um, and uh, and lastly, final ad for today's show is. Are you a comedy fan? Well, great news. Chris D'Elia is going back on tour. See him at one of the following states. Alabama, Alaska, Arkansas, Connecticut, Georgia, Hawaii, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, Mississippi, Montana, Nebraska, Nevada, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New Mexico, North Carolina, Ohio, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, and somewhere else uh, in the... Uh, the Age of Consent is 16 tour. Uh, brand new tour. Dalia's going on. You can get your tickets at Ticketmaster right now or on ChrisDalia.com. Uh, Chris D'Elia, Justin Bieber's favorite comedian. So if you like Justin Bieber, you'll probably like Chris D'Elia. He says, hit him up in his DMs for free tickets. Uh, Chris D'Elia on tour now. Thank you, Kyle Anderson. Yeah, he was trying to book a show at Joe Rogan's club, Mothership. And they wouldn't let him? Yeah, well, he wouldn't do it until they change it to daughtership. Uh, <laughs> also, I didn't. I noticed Texas was not on this list. Oh uh, yeah. So yeah. That's uh, a, the, too many dads carrying guns in that. Too state. many dads <laughs> carrying guns. Uh, maybe uh, go through this list again, see which ones are uh, are gun carrying states. Kyle, it's so great to have you on the show. Yeah, Before this is you go, so fun. we have a couple of, of gifts for oh, wow. you. Uh, first, we have your very own Jew Rogan Experience Whoa, sticker. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, I always say voting in California, or voting around the country is very important, whatever your interests are, whether you are a liberal, a conservative, or a moderate like me. Uh, but one thing I've noticed about California is that, um, you know, our votes in national elections don't really do much. So I designed my very own California I Voted sticker. It's identical to the California I Voted stickers, except mine says, I farted. Nice. And here you go. And then lastly, uh, if you're a listener of the Joe Rogan experience, you may know that he pushes a product on there called Alpha Brain. Uh, Here on the Joe Rogan experience, we have a product that we like to push called Beta Brain. Cool. Uh, On Joe Rogan's bottles, you know, you may see him holding up a heavy kettlebell with Mm -hmm. all his muscles bulging. Here you can see me with a pot belly doing a yoga pose. Uh, beta brain, obedience, fealty, insecurity. For people who take medical advice from podcast hosts, beta brain, as seen on the Jew Rogan experience at the Edelmeister on all platforms, it's Tic Tacs. That's uh, so nice funny. jar full of Tic Tacs. Do, uh, do you know about his kicks? His kicks? Do you know about Joe Rogan's kicking? No. Do, so he canonically has. Oh, the, the, the hardest the stru- kick, the strongest, strongest, strongest kick, kick in, in the world. world. Yeah. It's insane. Wild. Do you think it's. Alpha brain? <laughs> no, I think it's not getting the vaccine. Uh, all right. I am uh, Josh Edelman. This is Kyle Anderson. Kyle, anything you want to promote before we go? Very good, Josh. Check out his, all of his documentaries on YouTube. Kyle yeah, Anderson. Kyle Anderson Comedy on YouTube Kyle and Anderson Instagram. Comedy. Check me out. Um, really funny guy. Uh, thank you for being on the show. Uh, this has been the Jew Rogan Experience, and we will see you next Wednesday.